You too are a man of culture. Canada. Anyway. This took a turn. It's kind of funny, actually. I can't remember the name of the plant, but for my birthday this year, my my mother took me um, plant buying. Wait, she she bought me a, a a plant for my birthday. Two plants actually. She bought me a, a peace lily and a philodendron. The philodendron's up on my fridge, and the peace lily's outside right now on summer vacation. And uh, when we were there, we were wandering around, and I can't remember the name of it for the fucking life of me. But there were these large, they almost look like trees. They kind of look kind of bamboo-y almost, like in in in, in look. Um, I can't remember the name of them. It had a long name. And my mom used a scientific name, which didn't make things any easier. But my mom was like, oh, look at that. They have these. Just rattles off what the name was. And she's like, I will never forget that plant. And I'm like, why? And she's like, when we were in the tropics, because cause they, they spent a bunch of years like, or a um, um, couple summers, like, traveling down to the Amazon and Galapagos and that area. And she's like, when we were in the Amazon, uh, one of the towns they stayed in, their tour guide, who was a native, grew this plant. I'm like, why? And she's like, they used it as a psychedelic. And I'm like, this plant wasn't, like, $400? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to run a 30-second ad. And thanks, Hobo, for the channel points towards a day off. And uh, courtesy of Bastet, and then we're going to get started. Okay, so in like 10 minutes, we went from... Creepy basements. Animal Crossing murder basements. Um, getting stepped on by giants in Dwarf Fortress. To weed? That escalated quickly. All right, um, so we're jumping back in to Bolt Vishers. A fort I kind of don't know what to do with, which is kind of um, not super happy, but um, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? There's water everywhere. Hmm, I wonder why there's water everywhere. Um, <clears throat> yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. Just, just totally normal start for my streams. Um... Welcome to Bolt Fishers. A perfectly normal fort. So this is, um, we have like kind of this outer wall thing going on. And I need to make sure that, that this bridge gets hooked up. But we have this outer wall thing going on, right? We're mostly surviving off of fishing. Uh, over above my fishing docks over here, uh, there are these windmills. Which are powering, uh, these pumps right here. Okay, which are pumping water up into this reservoir, right? Now, the way this works is um, when, when baddies show up, in theory, I, uh, I lock these doors um, and open this tunnel, right? And then the baddies walk up the tunnel, and um, then I close the doors and pull a lever, which drains this out of here and instantly drowns them. Um, or kills them with water pressure. One of the two, I'm not actually sure which will happen first, in theory, in theory. It does work. That's why there's water everywhere. Uh... <laughs> That's, that's why there's water just spreading out. It's fine. Um, I'm not going to kill my whole fortress with it. Although, man, it would be funny if I pulled the wrong lever at the wrong time and or something pulls the wrong lever and we get a water cannon shooting into my construction area. It'd be hilarious. Uh, totally fine. Totally won't drown my whole military or anything. Um, yeah, welcome to Bolt Fishers, the fortress that was cursed on day one by the dwar by a dwarf dying to a giant crocodile and getting, um, or alligator, rather, and, uh, is still under the floorboards. Totally waterlogged. Here's the actual fort itself. I quite like the design of the actual fort itself. It's got the kind of like this, like, spinny look to it. 
Um, if anybody is like um, unfamiliar with Dwarf Fortress related stuff, just just ask, just ask questions in chat. We'll 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 get you uh, answered up here. Uh, that whole area has been set to be made into more bedrooms. Um, we've kind of got a, a tavern kind of in the middle area. Right next to the tavern is a guild hall. Right above the tavern, we have our kitchens, um, as well as office and prison, which we desperately needed, unfortunately, because apparently, like, this fortress is batshit crazy. Um, down there is the hospital, which is kind of like this open area in the middle of stuff. Um, underneath it is the coffin area, which is also our temple. Um, and then right beneath this, like, quite literally right beneath the fortress is this cavern layer, which I haven't dug into too much. Down here is our new coffin area, because people are still dying. Um, if I go down a little bit, we've kind of got this larger area where I'm starting to store stuff. we got boulders, um, clothes working, uh, just kind of a generic store everything area. Yeah. Could you? Uh, yes. Would they be even remotely effective? No. You have to give them something. Um, you could make an army of wrestlers that have shields. As long as they have shields, they can kind of do something. But, like, the problem is if they're completely unarmed with no armor or anything, they will just run into combat and get cut to pieces and die. It doesn't matter how good they are. They will just go in and die. Um, so you have to, at the very least, give them leather, armor, and shields. Uh, but yes, you could do that. Um, they will never be as effective as armed dwarves. Um, but they, they would be listed as wrestlers. Um, wrestling is actually the most mechanically, in game-wise, complex combat form in the game. Um, which is super silly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a, that's, it's something you, you could, you could do. Um, you wouldn't want to, but you could do it. I'm actually going to try something. I'm going to turn up my bitrate a little bit. I might drop frames in the, little, in the next little bit, but I I, I, I want to see if like my ISPs fix their shit. It's going to bump it up to 4,000. Not 40,000, 4,000. Instead of 3,000. Bump it up by 1,000. See if I start dropping frames. All right, so um, <clears throat> this, is, this is the fort area, basically. And then there's kind of nothing beneath it. So we're... 26 layers down total. Not too deep. This is kind of our little coffin area that we're going to slowly expand on. Are these all assigned? No, they aren't. Use for burial. 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 I think we're going to use this for burial. And also for burial, 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 burial. And burial. Hey, Bamboozy. What's over 9,000? But yeah, this is the actual fort. So this fort is, like, horribly depressed. Um, I think the average dwarf is, like, ready to stab somebody's face in. Uh, it's really bad. <laughs> um, the reason for this is because uh, we're mostly working outside, right? And what's, uh, what's fantastic about mostly working outside is it never stops raining here. Um, so these dwarves are all mega depressed. Um, which sucks. But we're working on it. We're going to keep working on it. Oh, bitrate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't started dropping frames yet, so. Uh, technically my internet is fast enough that I should be able to stream at 6,000 bitrate. But randomly, around the time lockdown started, um, if I would stream at 6,000 bitrate, I would drop all of the frame rate. I've made a British fort? I mean, I made my, my text-to-speech for bits... Uh, bitish. <laughs> um, I mean, you would know. I mean, here's the thing, right? It rains most of the year here, too. So, like, we, we kind of have pretty British-y weather. Clap! That's why nobody watches me. Because my amazing humor. My wonderful puns. Like, look at all of these disorderly conduct. 
accusations. Like, Jesus. And I got more. And nobody witnessed the building destruction. Ding! This is where you get uh, a round of applause for the... And laughs for the hilarious humors. But anyway, um, we are expanding the the size of the fort as best we can. Um, I should actually get them to do the bedrooms first. Is this where Streamer goes to prison for terrible yoke? Canadian laughter. <laughs> I need a... Do I not have a laugh track? Oh, I do. There you go. It's, it's so funny. Um, B-Lug is beating the shit out of somebody. <laughs> Excellent. I think B-Lug just killed somebody. Actually. See how he bites off the shell to get at the nut? I do, actually. No, 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 no! 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 All right, so we're going to build fortifications all the way along here. And, like, most of the construction in this fort, it's all made out of wood. Um, It's funny, because, like, I'm starting to, like, deny what people say when they're just like, Wood! Oh, God! And they get all mad at you doing anything with wood. And I'm just like, pave your fort with wood. Because what is more dwarfy than... What, what, what is more dwarfy than just having wooden constructions everywhere for the elves to oogle at? Oh, they're already at war with us. They were at war with us before we settled here. So, angry elves is fine. I mean, look how much I've clear cut. This was just, like, packed thick with trees. And all of that's been clear cut. This side, not so much. This side, yes. No regrets? Yeah. Well, why would we have regrets? In fact, we got more to chop down. So there's a few people here for the first time. There's some new names in the chat. If you're here for the first time, how did you find the stream? I'm always curious to know that. All right. Did I get... Cool. So that is mechanismed up. Where did I put the lever? Ah, there's my lever room. Uh, that's the whoosh button. That's not the one I want to pull. That's the outer wall doors. Uh, someone should be going to go pull that, I would hope. Ah. You. Ah. Congratulations. You found my streams. Yeah, that was a that was a little while ago now. It's also one of the most viewed videos on the YouTube channel, which makes me happy. Got you to stay? Well, if if it makes you want to stay even more, um we're going to do more of those. He confirmed afterwards that yeah, he'll do more. So, I'm happy. wonder how long it's going to take for all of this water to dry up. Or if it's ever going to dry up. Or if we've just, like, made this into a swamp. Kind of okay with that, to be honest. You have a crush on Tarn. I'm sure he'd be flattered. Some migrants have arrived. They'll get us over 100 dwarves, probably. Two dwarves? novice marks dwarf, eh? Which one was the... I want to say this was supposed to be the marks dwarf squad. But I guess I could also just disband the squad and make a new squad. I do also just... I just love listening to Tarn talk, honestly. A little tight with resources when working on projects. His negative views about things. Likes a little excitement now and then. Is trusting slow to anger? 
quite ambitious, likes to brawl, does not go out of his way to help others, and is troubled by this, as he truly respects sacrifice. Somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger. Hmm. Well, maybe you're not the one. How about you? Dreams of creating a great work of art. Scatterbrained. Not swayed to the emotional appeals. Lives a fast-paced life. I mean, who doesn't? want to stick around for this stream because of the talk of the giant stepping fetish. I mean, actually, m more accurately, damage. If you tune into this stream and the first thing you hear is talk about giant stepping fetishes and War Fortress, and you don't immediately hit the back button or Alt F4 your browser or click on a new channel or go back to following and say, fuck this shit, and your response is to click the follow button, I think that... You were meant to watch this stream. Like, let's be honest. Like, if, if that's enough reason to keep you around, I think it was meant to be. Does it mean you got me new followers? I... I don't know. <laughs> Three people followed, although you were the most recent one to follow. So, maybe, maybe not. And then you were <laughs> surprised. I'd be more surprised that you thought, what the fuck, actually. Often nervous, lives a fast-paced life, is assertive, isn't particularly curious about the world, and has a tendency to consider ideas and abstractions over practical applications. Isn't particularly curious about the world, feels strong cravings, and sh seeks short-term rewards. Well, I don't really need you doing that. So how about we put you on masonry and, and, and uh, stoneworking? And we got a peasant. He's annoyed when caught in the rain. 62 years old. Wants to craft the masterwork. You can also go into the masonry. Is it possible for... Joke, jokes aside. Is it possible for dwarves to like giants for any reason? She's currently more thoughtless. She is easily moved to mercy, and she does not generally respond to emotional appeals. She tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others, and she is quite ambitious. Love is love, baby. I mean, you know. Let me go check my blood sugar. I feel off. Although, on the bright side, I haven't started dropping frames yet, so that's good. I'll be back in a second.
All right. If there is a friendly giant that would be a positive interaction between a dwarf and a giant to develop, would it be possible for them to develop a romantic relationship? How about instead I ask the question that I didn't see until afterwards, which was asked by Krug Smash, um, which was, is it possible or will it ever be possible for us to make clothes for giants so that we can have giants join our fort and they won't go insane? Um, also, my uh, blood sugar is low, so I have um, licorice. Also, hi, Oves a lot. Also, I don't think there is any interspecies relationships already. I don't think that's a thing. I know it is possible for somebody to be married to somebody else and then them to be made into a necromancer experiment, but that's something different. That's also a weird last name. Zasit Athel. Also, I'm not going to answer that question, G, G Panta. That's for you and your fan fiction. She seeks out exciting and adventurous situations. She dreams of mastering a skill. She personally sees those that have a negative view of those who... She personally has a negative view of those who exercise power over others and sees working hard as a foolish waste of time and dreams of mastering a skill. She seeks out exciting and adventurous situations and she thinks she is fairly important in the grand scheme of things. She tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects, but she doesn't handle stress well. Damn it. Also, they must have a lot of bees at the mountain homes. I'm getting lots of wax workers. Why? So we can drown the rest of chat? Zapdos? Because what have we done here? We're all going to hell. Put you on the stone working too. Hopefully we won't need to do much combat because hopefully the um, water cannon will do the work. I mean, I don't have any hatred for pointy ears. Elves are, elves are just fine. It's only when they attack me for cutting down their trees that I don't like them. It's when they decide that eco-terrorism is okay. That I don't like them. The rest of the time, they're fine. Honestly. Rest of the time, they are fine. A lot of like random forbidden trees for kind of no reason. Hold on to that feeling and stop singing bad songs. I actually heard that song on the radio the other day and I was like, my God, that's a terrible song. Like, I, I'm going to maintain forever that Don't Stop Believing is a horrible song. It's called A Guilty Pleasure? No, it's called... Oh, God, why do I have to hear this shit again? 
Fuck. There's no guilty pleasure there. It's just bad. It's like the pop music that I hate on these days. That's just bad music, right? It's just like that. Except instead of being just bad music, it's old, just bad music. And there's a lot of music out there like that. Stuff that's just like unforgivably terrible. Like I will be one of the first people to jump on the train that one of the worst things to happen in 2020 is the fact that Nickelback is putting, is putting out a new album. Oh, yeah, but there's a lot of bad music that's good to be drunk and sing along with. <laughs> there's a lot of really bad music out there that's like, oh, yeah, well, that song is great to just blab along with when drunk. It's like, well, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad music out there that's great to blab along with when drunk, you know? And I'm, trust me, I'm the, I'm the first to agree with that. I mean, there's musical talent involved with that bad music, unlike Friday. <laughs> Friday doesn't have any musical talent. I wonder what the heck Rebecca Black is doing these days. Like, genuinely. Like, what the hell is she doing these days? I remember last time I heard about Rebecca Black, I heard that she, like, had to be homeschooled or something. Which I was too, so I, I can sympathize. But, like, she was just getting harassed so badly at her school, which is kind of awful. She got into acting. I know she was in a... Um, music video. Do I have a lever to stop that pump? Round tunnel. Tunnel side door. I don't think so. Uh, no, I... Oh, I do. It's this one, right? Let's just pull random lever, lever and see what happens, right? This will be fine. What could possibly go wrong? I'm kind of out of alcohol, too. Cool. It is the right one. So that stops the whole mechanism from pumping. Also, nice emote, Alan Aso. All right, I'm not sure what's causing all of this, like... Water to spread? Some really weird water water physics going on on this map. Oh, God. There's a hole in the wall. We have to fire the water cannon again, uh, because there's a hole in it. I was like, where is this water coming from? Found the problem. I guess that'll just flow until that layer is all done. Oops. A leak, yeah. Well, let's put them into burrow one. Um, turn off the job cancellations. It's fine. We just have to uh, drain out the... A water cannon. Alright, so I'm pretty certain, yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's pull this lever. Cool. So that pulls all those, and then we can just pull the uh, whoosh lever. Which I'm sure is going to be plenty of fun. Let's just zoom out. Get a proper, proper look at this while this goes off. It didn't have as much water pressure in it as we wanted. And because it's just going like straight out the side and into the water, it's not going to fill the whole thing up instantly. But that's what that'll do normally. All right, so we got to get up there and repair that. We'll just kind of let this drain for a little bit.
because we need to fix that because there is a leak right there. I don't know how that spawned. But we're going to need to fill that in. So I do actually have a door to this level, but I need to unforbid it. And uh, I need... Well, I mean, it's shallow enough already. Let's uh, see if I can put that there. Excellent. Um... Let's unforbid the dwarves and let them come out. All right, who the heck's my manager? Logum, what are you doing? Oh, that explains why you're not doing anything of value. Is because you're utterly harrowed by the nightmare that is your tragic life. Well, makes you a very efficient manager. How about this? How about we replace you? and let you live out the nightmare that is your tragic life, and give it to one of those peasants that just showed up. I'm sure that they'll be just fine at the job. Also, somebody tantrumed and knocked down two mason tables. Um, Let me put you... Yeah, that's... That's my manager right there, which is now you, Yuzel. I hope that you like your new job, Yuzel. You're now a very important dwarf. But uh, I'm going to have to take you off of... ...stoneworking and hauling so that you actually get stuff done. Hopefully I just did that to the right dwarf. Nope, I did not do that to the right dwarf. It's fine. Savage? Eh. It's a natural occurrence. The savagery, that is. Although, th this was a fort that I think I'm on quote saying, um, I set the whole fort on fire because we're never going to get anything done here anyway. Alright, here comes Iton to repair the leak. I can pull the whoosh lever again. I don't need to drain the whole thing. There's a lot of water outside. Holy shit. Alright, sweet. Leak's been repaired. We're just gonna wait for him to get out, and then we're gonna lock the door again. And then once he's out, we're going to uh, begin the thing filling again. Pull that lever to get it filling, and go up here and forbid the door. Look at all of those depressed fisher dwarves. I don't blame them for being depressed. They are fishing, after all. It's a horrible pastime. What's up, Dorf? Burger, how you doing? Some plant refuse. Well, you should haul that plant refuse out of your house. This looks so cool when it's filling, though. Good to hear, Dorfberger. Well, on the bright side, this drain is certainly making this more effective. Once those are all shut, it'll drown things much more effectively. Why is there wild boars walking up my drowning tunnel? Well, Dwarf Fortress, eh? Okay, sweet. There are actually brewing drinks now. Alright, I could totally just open the outer wall doors now. And there we go. It's a very wet fort. Yeah, just some of the good old ultra violence for some of the good old dwarf fortress. I'm 
Drowning Tunnel sounds like an emo band. Yeah, unfortunately, they gurgled after their second album. But, you know, it's weird. Like, Andrew WK kind of got mad at them for their first album because they did call it We're Wet. And, you know, uh, Andrew WK's first album was called I Get Wet. Um, and, you know, Drowning Tunnel naming their album We Are Wet was just, you know, a little bit too close, right? Funny, Andrew WK is normally a very, like, nice guy. But in this case, you know, he took them to court over it. It was kind of a big ordeal. Unrelated, I've been listening to a lot of Andrew WK recently. <laughs> Vacker, the Fisher Dwarf, throws a tantrum. <sighs> no reported crimes, though. Andrew WK seems like both, uh, on one hand, one of the greatest trolls of all time, and on the other hand, like, seems like a really chill, smart dude. I don't know. I find his music way too entertaining. Which is why everybody's allowed to have terrible taste in music. So uh, you're entitled to enjoy and listen to Don't Stop Believing by Journey, even though it's terrible music. As long as you acknowledge that it's terrible music. Which is why I listen to and enjoy Andrew WK, while at the same time acknowledging it's terrible. This is such a... <sighs> Hard to deal with Fort Chatroom. So one of the things that we built recently at the end of the last stream of this fort is this. This is an above ground tavern, which is supposed to have visitors and guests. Th none of them have shown up yet. So I'm going to be building a uh, another kitchen up here for the above ground peoples. Because um, the idea of this fort isn't like to be warmongers or, or do anything combat heavy. That's what my other fort's for. This one is was supposed to just be kind of like a nice happy fishing town. Um, that's going so well, you know, so well that the dwarf dead under the floorboards. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what this fort's been about. Beer be for a few? Alrighty. See you in a few. You're going to work on some Dwarf Fortress music? That's, are, are, are you actually making a dubstep remix of the Dwarf Fortress music? <laughs> I hate you if you are. No, 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 not dwarf step. Dwarf step. Please. If you're going to say horrible monstrosities and things like that, at least get the terminology right. Who said I was bullying you? I was simply correcting an error. In fact, you should thank me. DJ Tantrum Spiral. DJ Tantrum Spiral! Womp womp. It's got another uh, track of Dwarf Step up you. This one's called Slavering Forgotten Beast. Oh shit. Avuz, the Fisher Dwarf, was found dead, dehydrated. Oh no, you shall be so sad. Where are you? I actually can't. Oh. Well, I mean, you gotta christen the new tavern somehow. Poor dwarf. They signed up for the nice fishing village that was supposed to be this fort. Uh, dehydrated because they were too depressed to drink. And they were depressed because of how wet the fort is. This fort's kind of like that one town in, um... Pirates of the Caribbean. So, yeah, sec the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie. That one town that's just, like, all... Like, halfway, like... I, I can't remember the name of it. It's, th it's that lady that uh, Jack Sparrow goes to visit. And everything's, like, half underwater. And it's constantly raining. I can't remember the name of the town. Anyway, it's like that town. 
Euthris is throwing a tantrum. Excellent. Oh, there he goes. So this fort was kind of meant to be sort of like an intermission fort. Um, I've had a few forts in this world already, and they've all been pretty long. But this one was kind of supposed to be like, oh, you know, we'll do it for like two or three streams. And it's kind of gone longer than I've intended for it to go. So this will probably be the last stream I do of this particular fortress. Probably. But we, I kind of need a, a good time to retire it, you know? Um... We're not in combat. We do have 95 dwarves in the fort now. Maybe 94, actually, because one just died. Um, and then after this fort, I kind of want to attempt something. Attempt something really dumb. Um, and that thing is, I want to try and do a millennium fort. Basically, a fort that lasts a thousand years. Yes, 94 dwarves we have. But in order to do that, I need to set it up well, right? I think that could be exciting or interesting. But we'd have to be non-combat for the first couple hundred, probably. So I, I don't know exactly how we'll do it. But this world is still pretty young. We're only in the year 159. And we'd have to figure out where in the world we put it, right? Because this fort is like kind of up here and on a lake and quite nice. We've got a lot of world where we could put it. Whole lot of world. Whole lot of world. I'm not sure what that means, Chocobo, so I'm just not going to respond. Hey, Shurzel. Do you have a nine-month... Oh, did you just get your nine-month hat? Yeah, you did. Damn. Time flies. Like, I, I'll i be honest. Like, ooh. An ambush. Curse all friends of nature. Let's work. But here's the problem is it's not going to work. Because currently I have the uh, the drains up incorrectly. These aren't done yet. Hmm. Hopefully it's a small ambush. The elves have attacked. Do some. Get inside. You goddamn dumb dwarf. Well, maybe he will save us all. We're all just going for our poor dwarf there on the outside. Dude, someone was found dead. I really hope they get those doors shut. Oh, they did. Okay, now I've got a door I gotta open, which is the drown tunnel. Uh, but I got another door I gotta pull, which is the tunnel side door, which I think is already shut. There you go, perfect. Actually, I don't think they can get into the fort right now. Hmm. We might actually be able to make this work. Yeah, we might actually be able to make this work. Okay, so let's get rid of that, that, and that. And then all the way along here, let's get rid of this. And let's add this area to the burrow. 
and this area to the burrow. I think I have... Into 62 hours of Space Haven? How many hours do you have in Jupiter Hell? I saw the trader has been found dead, reason dehydrated. At least we have 150 drinks. Okay, so I need to get in there. So you know what? I don't want to pull any levers and like accidentally let those elves in. Instead, I'm just going to do this. I add that area to the burrow. Okay, so someone's going to come up here and deconstruct that. And then we're going to go over there and deconstruct all the walls. And assuming the elves stay over on this side, they shouldn't come in path to us immediately. Hopefully. Hopefully. And then in theory, we should be able to build a wall in front of that. And then we should be able to use the drowning tunnel the way it was intended. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. So far, though, only one casualty in this ambush. That's not too bad. But I'm I'm glad that you got enjoyment out of games that I recommended. One of the things that one of the coolest things about getting to do this for a living, Shrizzle, is being able to uh, point people towards cool games that you may not have otherwise heard of. Okay, so far so good. Like there is an elf down there, kind of wandering around in the mud over here, but uh, heavy, the elf. Um, doesn't seem to have noticed them through the fortifications. You're back into CK2? Is that because of CK3 out soon? Mondorves. I think they saw the elves. Ah, oh, crap. The elves are coming over. You can see who's brave and who's not. The ones who are brave are continuing to work. The ones who are not are canceling the jobs. Oh, that's a bummer. Is your tea on time sink which DF is to you? Yeah, no, I, I know that feeling. There's been many games like that for me over the years. Come on, elves, just walk away. There you go. Stop scaring my dwarves. I don't know. I've been staring at Crusader Kings 3 and, like, going, maybe? And then not. And then going, maybe? And then not. I could apply for key. I just haven't. All right, so let's start. Build, building that. We're almost there. I oh, know I do think the Crusader Kings games and War Fortress kind of have a lot in common in a way. Except one has considerably worse UI. And we all know that that's Crusader Kings. <laughs> are not flat, are not a flawless record? Yeah. No, I know that feeling. I just hope that the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress is out sooner rather than later. That being said, I hope Tarn takes his time and does a really good job, but on the flip side, I'm an impatient little twit. And I want it now. Alright. So how many are we actually up against? Not that many. That's... Not that many. Oh yeah, right, we have a caged Cyclops. I should mention that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
No, you're completely right, Trizzle. I don't know. I, I just like to call out other games for having worse UI design than Dwarf Fortress because I think it's funny. Because everybody goes on about how bad the UI is in Dwarf Fortress, but in reality, like, there's a lot of people who play a lot of games that are infinitely worse. Karn doesn't exactly rush things, no, but, um... This is just the DF player in me. I kind of want the Steam version to come out so that we can get more, like, actual gameplay content. You know? Like, I, I want him to be working on um, Villains Part 2. Like, the rest of Villains. Alright, so I'm actually kind of shocked that we were able to pull this off. I thought that the dwarves would be panicking and running away with the elves walking around back there. But, um... Is it as overwhelming as DF? I would say more overwhelming because you just paid $400 for it and all of the DLCs. <laughs> Whereas DF's free, so at least you don't have like the, oh god, what if I don't like this thing that I just spent a buttload of money on problem. All right. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go into this burrow. Oh no, we're not going to delete it. We're going to go into the burrow and we're going to erase. We're going to get rid of this, most of this chunk that I just drew. And I'm going to... Redraw that. And build one tile of wall. And, uh... No that lever I think is the right lever it opens the front door it should also open this door crap um do I not have another lever that opens that one I thought I did down tunnel Hmm. Maybe that one does? Might actually need to connect it. Well, what can I do? But how's things in vicious? I mean, I'm more interested in myths than magic, actually. Can I... hook you up to a bridge that's already up? Because I think I can. Let the dwarves out. Ah, we can. I was going to say, where are you grabbing that trigger from? But... Yeah, no, for me, it's more of a concern of I don't... I'm not convinced that people actually want to watch me play that game. That's the problem that I have with it. So that locks that door. I want to unlock it.
Need to wait for dwarves to come back. And we gotta get the timing real good on this. Here comes the dwarf. Excellent. All right, here come the elves. Here they all come. Who's ready for the water cannon chat? Can we get a round of beers? And now would be a good time to look up, actually. <laughs> now would be a really good time to look up. Um, tunnel side door. And drown tunnel. Now I really, really, really need some dwarves to pull that lever before they get to the end of this. Look at them heading into their wooden tomb. How fitting. Uh, dwarves, who's pulling the lever? Anytime would be great. There you go. That's door number one and door number two and door number three. Excellent. Oh, how's it go? You, you've come at a, the perfect time. It's time to pull the big whoosh lever. Time to rub your hands together, boys and girls. We got, uh, got some big excite that's about to happen. Who's doing the honors? Stone is doing the honors! How fitting is that? Stone arrives in the chat and he's like, Evening, how's the fort? Oh, I guess I have to pull a lever. And I'm moving it turn by turn. And the lever's pulled. <clears throat> pull the lever. <laughs> no, that's definitely the right lever. No questions asked there. That's the right lever. Oh, that's gonna smell great in the mo in the morning. Uh, that was a bunch of alive elves, and now they're very much underwater elves. <laughs> And dead. All right, so um, I'm going to pull the whoosh lever again. And I'm going to pull the s tunnel side door lever again. And it's going to take forever to drain. It's going to take forever to drain. See, elves? Well, I mean, they drown themselves. And then the water dra drains out. We do have to go and get that dwarf's, you know, body at some point. Look at that blood. Ooh, there goes the corpses and the clothing. Ugh. Disgusting. The wooden clothing's just getting, like, washed out onto the plane. Those are elven elves. I'm assuming. I didn't actually look. Yeah, those are those are elf ass elves. They've got wood armor. Macadamia wood shield. Good job, bolt fishers. Good job. There's so much water out there, it's ridiculous. And you is throwing another tantrum. Got so many reasons to be happy, a damn dwarf. You're throwing a goddamn tantrum. How does the fill mechanism fill me fill mechanism work? So what what's happening is right over here, um, this these are windmills. You can see they're actually animated. These windmills right underneath them, there is a gear assembly, 
These gears are connected to these uh, wood axles, which rotate when they're attached to the gear assembly. They can't be built without gears. They need to be attached to gears. Then these gears are creating a total of 160 power, which then powers this. This is a screw pump, right? So gen what you're supposed to do with screw pumps is you're supposed to put like one screw pump down and then a dwarf pumps on the pump or you attach it to power and then it pumps a thing over. So it pumps, this one's pumping from the right to the left. So it's pumping from here over to here. And it's pumping water out of the lake. So the water comes up here, flows right here, and it's pumped from here on the layer below over to this side, right? And then right above it, there's another pump facing the other direction on top of it, which is being powered by the pump below it because they're connected to the same power structure. And it pumps the water up from this side over to this side. One layer above it, the final pump pumps the water from here over to here and then into the giant cistern. The pumps are using a total um, 100 and, or at 96 power total. And the windmills are producing 160. Um, yes, but you'd need a lot of drainage. Um, at that point, it would be easier just to dump lava on it and then, um, dig through the obsidian and then drop, dump another layer of lava and then dig through the obsidian, etc. Um, but yes, there, I once drained an ocean and built a tower in the middle of it. I drained an ocean into the caverns underground. It's good times. Give me some very waterlogged corpses. I'm going to claim all of this crap and dump it all. Or mark it all to be thrown out. Minus the, the dwarf. We should probably bury him. The rest can all just get thrown into the trash. We don't need that elven garbage. Disgusting. Water the tree hill. Water the tree lovers. <laughs> Just passing the time flipping emotes? That's what happens when you shoot a laser into the mirror. So I still don't know what else to do with this fort. <laughs> I think um, this this kind of sucks. So there is a there was a artist for years that I used to listen to music of on streams, and uh, the rights to his music has changed. So it, he's no longer fully independently published. He now has a record label, and so a lot of old YouTube videos of mine are all now suddenly content ID claimed because um, some record label took over control of this guy's music. Excuse me, which really sucks. Because I would very much enjoy be able to listen to his music again, but... But c'est la vie. All right, how deep is this? Uh, still out of seven, it's almost completely full at the end here. Gonna be quite the cleanup too. I mean, we're already in a in not a marsh. Um, the North Lake. What kind of the famous jungle of the perfect land? Yeah, I mean, we're already in jungles. Let's. We're not on an island. No, this is connected to the mainland. It's kind of like, what if Australia had a landmass attaching it to the mainland? Hi, animal. How are you? We just drowned a bunch of elves. Hello. Hello. Those things. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't on screen, so how could you have seen it? Drowning Elves Party. I mean, they've already been drowned, but.
We're just continuing to drown them now. So what have you been up to today, Animal? How's your weekend been? Happy Sunday. So Drax ESG, now that now that you're here and watching the stream after discovering the interview that I did with Tarn, what do you think of the stream? I'd like your full review. <laughs> We're definitely the most on topic Dwarf Fortress content on the internet. I really wish that I had the drainage system set up. Which is what I was setting up, and then I had to go and ruin it. Kib, you poor dwarf. So the next thing I want to build up on the surface is I want to build a temple. Kind of attached, maybe not directly attached, but right next to this uh, tavern that we have here. So the, the walls for the tavern are actually made out of wood, but um, the floor is made out of stone. And I think we're going to do the same for the temple. Got to have some of that good old-fashioned dwarven engineering, you know? A good Sunday, your favorite meat was had. What's your favorite meat? And a good dessert. I actually um I've I've bought I bought myself uh black licorice for when my blood sugar goes low and it's been kinda nice. Speaking of which I should go check where I'm at now. So I was low earlier. I'll be back in a second while I start working on this. It's nice when the dwarves are efficient. Can they carve the floor? They cannot carve the floor, unfortunately. Unfortunately, they cannot carve the floor. Uh, but what they can do is we can put statues on the floor. So kind of, oh, that was gold bars. Not what I wanted to do. Don't exactly have a lot of those. Yeah, no, in, o in order for it to be engraved, it has to be um, like a smoothed wall. Yep, yeah, nope. Can't cannot carve any constructed walls. Which, yeah, kinda sucks. But mm, it's okay. So this will be a little above ground temple. They do have a temple, but it's as I said, it's underground and it takes a long time to get there. This will be a little public temple. To avoid the constant raining? Yeah, that would kind of ruin the spirit of the fort, though. 
I mean, you you can farm cave fish in the in the caverns, but like it would, I don't know. What's what's the point of having an above ground fishing fort if you can't fish above ground? I don't know. I think it's kind of funny to have like a a horrible, like dreary mess of a fort for the uh, fishing fort. It kind of fits, you know. Besides, forts where everything goes smoothly are boring. <laughs> but yes, there, there is stuff I could do to most certainly mitigate the rain. No, it has not stopped raining since we got here. It's literally a dwarven hellhole. <laughs> it's like the fortress of the dwarf's worst nightmares. Just like Krug Smash's current fortress. A pyramid Aztec. -y. Ooh. I'd like to see screenshots of that. Pyramids are kind of easy to do. You just build a square and then put ramps around the edge, go up one, build a square, put ramps around the edge, go up one, build a square, put ramps around the edge, build up one. It's actually pretty easy. I, I prefer, like, circular pyramids. Dragon Man has withdrawn from society and has claimed a workshop, a mason's workshop. <laughs> the dwarves built the pyramids. Actually, I watched a documentary about that pretty recently. It was interesting. New theories on how the pyramids were built. Where a bunch of guy, like a bunch of scientists, like this is basically like how how they were like theorizing how they were built. It's like, a bunch five scientists were like, okay, we we go into a quarry, we make a brick to scale, make it the right shape and size, set it up correctly, and then build it somewhere. No, about the Egyptians building the pyramids, not dwarves building the pyramids. God, no. Leather. Hanshwing dwarf in the middle of everything. On a lair? I've never done that, Rene. What are the odds, I wonder? They used sound waves to build the pyramids. I mean, okay. One of my favorite things, Renee, is when you um, embark on a underground, on a Fortress that has an exposed cavern in it, and you start the fort and immediately have cavern access, and a forgotten beast is already there fighting with another forgotten beast. Because that is also possible. A fortress on a labyrinth. Why don't we just build one?
like, why don't we build one? Like, didn't Krug Smash build a labyrinth for one of a, for a dwarf in one of his forts? It was for that were creature person. If you build one, there'll be no Minotaur upset about Dwarven invaders. And what if we put the monsters in it? But yes. I've always wondered what would happen if you accidentally embarked on a vault, you know? Dolomite, sterling, silver, sheep slather. Cave spider silk cloth, rough wood opals, cave spider silk cloth, date palm wood logs, and date palm wood logs. Please be a door. Please, 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 please be a door. Yeah, no, I've always wondered what would happen if you embarked accidentally on a vault, because they're invisible on the overworld until you discover them. Look at all those blocks. <laughs> so many of them. You know, seven dead dwarves. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of like that, that screenshot that was posted on Reddit yesterday, I think. Which is the guy whose uh, wagon spawned in a volcano. <laughs> the run ended in milliseconds. <laughs> which is way too funny. What's the notification that pops up, Renee, when you embark on a lair? Out of serious curiosity. Ooh. Dragon Man, the diagnoser has created Aken Nicole, a dolomite coffin, and claims it as an heirloom. In the name of the family ancestor, Unib Stoker Boat. Game took that statement a little too literally, I think, Stone. A coffin. Some dwarves take this as a sign of impending doom. All craft worship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rose-cut wood opals and studded with sterling silver and decorated with cave spider silk and date palm wood, and encircled with bands of sheep leather. This object menaces with spikes of dolomite, cave spider silk, and date palm wood. Hey, Sasspot. Yeah, no, you're right. We always need coffins. I'm going to dig an extra little tomb for somebody. No idea whose tomb it'll be, but it'll be assigned to somebody important. Immediately in the event log. I was wondering if you'd get like a pop-up, like a Forgotten Beast style pop-up or File Force of Darkness pop-up. That's interesting. Planter has gone stark raving mad. Well, at least he's not going to go punching people. So that's good.
toppled by a woodcutter. Carpenter shop was toppled by a woodcutter. See, that's 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 the annoying thing is, carpenter shop was toppled by a woodcutter. It's like, can we not dwarves, please? Like, it's not that difficult for you just to not do that. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, right, yeah, this is not inside yet. Silly me. Build a row of ramps along the side here. And a door right there. I'm sure that this is getting shallow enough that we'll be able to go into it soon. Let it get a little shorter. I haven't looked for one. That spot. But maybe that's changed. I don't know. I, I like I said, I, I haven't been looking for a way to pause the game when stuff gets toppled, so eh. But yeah, why, why is that something specifically that you're looking for? Shall also plop a bunch more of these down. Oh, only one bed, eh? We don't have anywhere near enough housing for everybody to. Really? You could leave for decades. Someone ended up dischantering and destroying a well. Ugh. <laughs> okay. And what happened when they destroyed the well? At least it's just a well. A duck is fighting. Probably the animal dissector. Oh, no, it's the woodcutter is throwing a tantrum. Like, was the well getting destroyed the downfall of the fort? I mean, it would be a duck fighting a dwarf, or a dwarf beating a duck, more accurately. Animal, not two ducks fighting. All right, I got to listen to this nightmare that uh, Zapdos is working on. This is the first one Zapdos posted. A weird chord progression there. War Fortress inspired music. The Hall of Tongues has many members in Bolt Fishers and now requires a grand guild hall. 
My farmers want their their guild hall to be made nicer. I'm pretty sure it's this, yeah. So they want this to be valued up at twice as much. All right, you demanding little bastards. Good thing I got tons of statues. Okay, so what's the other one that you've got? Guild's name is a bit strange because I haven't edited it. Oh wait, you mean the actual like name of it, not just the name of the room? Yeah. Yeah. Hall of Tongues. The Bearded Fisher is a little better of the Oceanic Guild, the Fishery Guilds. It's a much better one. Got a bunch of animals that need to be slaughtered, actually. It's pretty damn good, actually. Still very much work in progress? It's not a bad start. I don't know what, what inspired you to go write music for Dwarf Fortress, but cool. Sounds like a terrible museum. What, the, the Hall of Tongues? I mean, we got much weirder museums in existence. All right, well, it's time to uh, pull this lever. Welcome back, El Neso. Yeah, anybody got any feedback for that music? All right, so now we suddenly have access to all of this elvish shit. And hopefully they dump all of that crap. Imagine just like walking out into an area filled with waterlogged elf corpses. Ugh. I like how they're hauling the wood first. <laughs> oh no! They killed chat. RIP chat. Can't remember. Why did we name that dwarf chat? I actually can't remember. It's been about a week. A little over a week, actually. In the dead marshes. Basically what this is. This chat is now in two years slow mode. Feels bad. You remember once I was in a chat that had slow mode set on so extreme, I had to wait 15,000 seconds before typing in another line, and I was like, uh, was it Tanchming? No, they were stuck outside. Elves killed him.
No, you're right. It was a vampire. Why was... Hmm. Oh. Because we didn't have a vampire in this fort, did we? It was in the previous fort. We named him Chat. But what, what fort was that in? Because that, that, that was in the Spike of Zealots, wasn't it? Now we had a vampire dwarf that we named Chad. And I'm pretty sure that was the outpost liaison. Whoa. Be based on uh, character count, where you could have X number of characters per Y seconds. That sounds like a nightmare. It sounds like no one would talk in chat. <laughs> That's mostly how that reads to me. It sounds like no one would talk ever. But maybe I'm wrong, who knows. So we're getting that drainage system being built properly on the correct side again. Yeah, no, it would be like some extreme shorthand. Like, it would be like the good old days when we had flip phones and had to hit, uh, like, one key on the phone keyboard, like, 18 times to say anything. That's probably what it would be like. The Hall of Crystals now has many members. And we now have a Stoneworkers Guild. All right. Speaking of... Man, the Guild of Tongues isn't happy with their... <sighs> I guess I'll just put a bunch of engravings on the ground. Yeah, we have a Stoneworkers Guild. All right, guys. I will be back in a sec. I need to use the toilet. Sorry about all these little breaks.
I mean, wouldn't you rather have dwarfs running around than having to stare at my shit cam? Which I, I could do this camera, but I feel like staring at the dwarves running around is more entertaining than just staring at an empty chair, you know? Flycut gave birth to a boy. I don't know why you'd have kids in such a horrible fortress. I'm actually kind of shocked that there's no miasma in here. Kind of really shocked. So they are actually starting to dump items. We're getting all of those elvish grown wood weapons and clothes thrown out. I mean, if you flip gun, it works. Well, I mean, it's it's fine. It's a little tantrum-y, but it's fine. Um, I've built a, a big old drowning cistern, which is a lot of fun. Uh, the problem is it's raining all the time, and I decided to build... Oh. Euthyrus has been missing for a week. Um, I decided to build a mostly above-ground fortress... Um, in a biome where it literally never stops raining. Jack Nurk. So all of the dwarves are just slowly going bonkers. That and we haven't found any metal yet. Not that I've been looking super hard, but... So currently we're just cleaning up after this elven ambush, which is actually getting dealt with pretty quickly. Kind of expecting the dwarves to take a little bit longer to deal with all of these, but they've cleaned them all up in a pretty short time. Get all of these corpses crushed. Well, I still got plenty of stuff still to throw up, but yeah, they're doing good work. Right now my chat looks like that scene from The Matrix 2 where they're all pointing guns at each other. And then I think it's Trinity's all like, either you, uh, either we all put the guns down or we all die right here, right now, or whatever. <laughs> God, I need to rewatch The Matrix. I kind of need to do that closer to the release of the fourth one. God, that's such a bad movie, but I love it. And that's why I love it. Sometimes you just have to love some garbage, you know? At least we're almost done with these elves. Okay, so I did have a bunch of carpenters. Okay, cool. Kib is actually back to work. Just gonna say, because, like, I've got all these bed jobs queued up and no one's claimed them yet. And the, all of the green names are dwarves that still need beds. <laughs> got a lot of dwarves that need beds. But, yeah, might as well start talking about it right now, because um, plans for the next fort in this world is I would like to attempt making a millennia fort. Just very simple. Make a fort that lasts a thousand years. My biggest worry about it isn't being able to actually do it. My biggest worry is it'll get boring. That's my biggest concern. Yeah, Millennia Fort.
But I figure that this this world is young enough that we could do it. But yeah, that's something that I would kind of like to try to do. One thousand years of dirt. Keep it small. Yeah. Um. I mean, it, it would be like a fifty dwarf pop, basically. Um. And then in like the last hundred years, like you bump it up to two hundred. Uh, four hundred and fifty, I think. For Arch Crystal, someone could like look that up. Oh hey, they found Euthyrus's body. <laughs> Died on the temporary beds. Oh, that's actually kind of disturbing. Yeah, exactly. Who knows what would happen to the sibs in that much time? I don't know. Somebody on the YouTube channel put uh, the thought in my head. And now I kind of want to do it. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's do this. Like, I figure what we need to do is we need to do something kind of like what Crux Smash did with Honey Stoker, where it's like kind of a smartly run, like uh, relatively shallow, partially above ground fort that just kind of goes. That's pretty self-sufficient-ish. That's not going to get invaded a lot. It's kind of what you need to do. So something like this, minus the part where it's raining all the time. <laughs> Basically a fat trench. Yeah, pretty much. Actually, that would be kind of a neat fort. Just dig a, a really long trench and put a, a wall around it and then having have like little walkways and rooms going in and out on either side. You'd need a big tomb complex. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A dark pits. No, dark pits are just a big hole. There's no structure to it or ingenuity. It's just a big hole. You need a really robust defensive mechanism. I guess here, here's the question that I'm kind of asking you guys. Do you guys want to watch me attempt that? Because we could also take breaks from it too. You know, we could, uh, like, if things got stale, we could always generate up a new world for a week or so and then go back to it. Um... We could always, like, you know, take our time with things like that. But, like, it being... It getting boring is my biggest concern. There's an injured duck in a tree. Should we chop down the tree? Save the duck? You'd love to watch that? Hmm. Ooh. The Forgotten Beast, Nunlord Pongbol Stew, has come. A gigantic hominoid, humanoid composed of rock crystal. It has wings and it undulates rhythmically. Beware. It's poisonous sting. The duck is probably safe up there, yeah. That is horrific. Rock crystal and wings? Holy hell, man.
445 years for Arch Crystal. And it took him years to do Arch Crystal, right? Oh god, can he fly in? He might actually be able to fly in. Assuming it can fly. How heavily ca Yeah, exactly. Rock crystal- Rock crystal's basically like... I didn't- Hold on, let, let me just Google rock crystal. It's bit- yeah, it's like rock glass, basically. It's- it's clear quartz. It's a polishable, clear, gla like, rock glass stuff. But luckily, I, I don't think the thing has any access to the fortress. I almost want to let it in and just let it kill this fort. <laughs> almost. Let's just finish building this. There you go. That'll be our temple. No, the crystal grows inside of the rock. Also, you know what? Might as well. Eh. Built this right underneath a pen pasture. Uh, meeting, sign, add, temple. No specific deed. The insightful cleat. Yeah, I also, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're right there. And probably also wasn't like me where the, um, where I kind of, you know, play mostly nonstop for long periods of time, right? Like, I play video games a lot more than most people. Why is there a corpse here? Or rather, why is there miasma here? Oh. It's Erdem's rotten, mangled body. Excellent. One could say it is my job. Some migrants have arrived despite the danger. Despite the stress, you mean? Oh, there's another dead dwarf. <laughs> another one! You know, chat, maybe we should just retire this fort and start that fort up. What do you guys think? I mean... We, we did get to test the weapon, and it worked. It did work. I think that uh, bolt fishers will live on in tumult and discord for a long time. Oh, did I just, I hit save. That's the wrong button. All right, I'm going to reload the fort after it's done saving and then retire it.
I like how you just say cap at the end of that. I'm like sitting here going like that don't work. Yeah, ten a thousand years is a millennia, not ten thousand years. Finished for the afternoon. We'll continue working on the f room in three hours. You're taking a break. I have to head off to beds. We'll see you later, animals. Cheers, man. So does that mean uh, you're going to stick around while we start up a new fort? Also, we're on the year 160, which means technically this fort... Oh, you suck. Yeah. Um, so the, the, this next fort is going to last for a thousand years. Okay, so we're going to retire this fortress for the time being. And it ends. Goodbye, bolt fishers. You were fun. So you come to your fort. I, I mean, here, here's the thing, right? I don't actually know how music stuff works. Also posting a Reddit thread, because why not? This seems like something that would be good to post a Reddit thread for. All right, so first thing I think I should do before we actually do anything else. Your legs are killing.